Sure. The hotter it gets, the more valuable, well, something that we think about a lot, but don't really ever experience a scarcity of, that's water. Get ready for water wars, like the one going on right now in drought-stricken Arizona. A Saudi-owned company grows alfalfa there in an area 100 miles west of Phoenix called Butter Valley. I said Saudi Arabia for a reason. Arizona has a $23.3 billion agriculture industry, and alfalfa is one of the key components contributing to the economic engine. One of Saudi Arabia's largest dairy companies farms 3,500 acres of state-owned land in Arizona. They send alfalfa back to the Middle East to feed their cow. Alfalfa is one of the most water-intensive crops there is, and there's not enough water in Saudi Arabia for them to grow their crops, so they come here and then ship the alfalfa back. The Arizona State Land Department leases more than 6,000 acres to Fandomante. For years, Arizona did not even know how much water the company was using. Arizona's Attorney General, Chris Mays, is strongly opposed to the company's current water usage. She intends to have its leases for state land canceled to prevent what she calls further waste. The state of Arizona has rescinded its approval for two new deep water wells for controversial Saudi-owned farms in the desert west of Phoenix. We cannot afford to give our water away, frankly, to anyone, let alone the Saudis, for free. These pumps are pumping water out of the ground that belongs to the state of Arizona, and essentially it's being exported to Saudi Arabia. All right, Jace Miller is here, partner at Triple M Farms, a fifth generation in Pinal County, Arizona. Jace, it's good to have you. We appreciate it. Uh, are the Saudis really the evil folks in, in this whole thing? Well, you know, the issue we're dealing with here, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Uh, you know, my family, we've been farming here uh, south of the Phoenix metro area for over 100 years. Um, so, obviously, we don't like seeing a foreign entity come into our neck of the world and, you know, compete with us in the marketplace and, and pull our valuable resources and ship them overseas. But at the same time, um, I have a kind of a looming feeling that this is more of a Trojan horse for the state to pull our water resources from um, agricultural lands, farm and ranch lands, uh, to kind of up the supply of the local metropolitan areas. Huh. All right. So we got the, I don't know if you heard the segment before, but we were talking about how hot it is. Phoenix is one of the cities we talked about it being sort of unbelievably hot or as hot as, I guess, Phoenix in the summer is always hot, but hotter than usual. Uh, right. Are we really prepared for sort of the the coming water usage and water problems that are that are going to happen in America? I feel like you're going to be at the center of this whole thing. You know, from my opinion, I've been speaking on this topic for the last four or five years now. I, I feel like we're not adequately prepared. Um, it's primarily here in Arizona, the water issues we're facing is kind of rode on the backs of the agriculture industry. Um, if you walked out into the general public here in the state, I gu guarantee you, you wouldn't find 10 people in a group that uh, know we're, we're even in a water crisis or water issues. So um, I, I do not think we're prepared for it. All right. There's been a lot of talk about hedge funds coming in to buy up water rights, foreign companies, the Saudis. Uh, obviously, you have to think about the Chinese as well, buying up water rights, uh, which which changes the dynamic, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that you said it's a Trojan horse in terms of being able to take back the water and be able to give it to the big the big growth in Phoenix and other and other cities in the Southwest. But I would flip that around and say, is it just a way to to grab this what is now a very valuable asset, which is water, and then make all of us pay a higher price for it? Right. Well, <clears throat> we've already seen that over the last five ten years. You know, we're we're losing water allotment, if not every year, every two to three years, and the little bit of water we do have to produce our crops, uh, our, our price margin has increased significantly. Um, and, you know, obviously, <clears throat> agriculture is a huge industry for the state. We produce a multitude of products that not only sustain food and fiber here in the United States, but all across the world. So it's a very important commodity, wow. um, yeah. this land that we have. And we have one of the best growing climates and soil profiles to do that. Yeah, I guess the flip side of it is the land's pretty useless if you can't water your crops that, that are supposed to grow on it, which is which is what the, which is what's happening now. 
All right. Hey, we appreciate what you're doing. We always love having farmers on because you're you're able to talk about real issues in a in a real meaningful and and nuanced way, which is what you got to deal with every day. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.